Welcome back to the C Space Studio, sponsored by Integral Ad Science here at CES 2025. My name is James Kotecki, and joining me are two fantastic guests. To my far left, Brett McMickle, Chief Technology Officer, at Kubota North America, and to my immediate left, Walter Flock, VP Innovation, Western Growers. Gentlemen, welcome both to the C Space Studio. Great Thank you for here. having us. Um, Brett, we'll start with you because uh, you're the returning guest, our returning champion, so you get, the, <laughs> you get to start first. Um, can you just quickly define uh, Kubota North America, what your brand means here in 2025, and maybe just tangibly what you're doing here at CES? Oh, I appreciate it. So this is the second year for Kubota to come to CES, and this year we're expanded uh, the exhibit, showing more of our products from construction, agriculture, residential. But really what we're highlighting is the innovation cycle, that is listening to customers, understanding their needs, developing products, and then iterating on those products. And you'll see that with uh, AgriConcept 2.0. So it's an evolution of what we brought last year. Mm -hmm. We listened to our customers. We now offer manual control and automation. But also, we're, we're uh, looking at the full work cycle. A lot of companies are looking at individual technologies, but not looking at the entire workflow. And so that's another aspect that we're highlighting this year, is how all of these connect together and really focusing on solving real solutions for our customers. And when you talk about that vehicle that you're bringing, I, I met, people might call it an autonomous tractor, right? It's probably not the right way to actually frame it. It's so much, it's more than that, right? It's, an, it's the idea of, uh, well, I'd, I'd like you to define it actually. Yeah, so last year we really highlighted the autonomy and the feedback we got is that utility tractors are used for a wide range of tasks. And our customers wanted the ability to operate the tractors manually, mm -hmm. as well as have the option to do autonomy for some of the tasks that are more repetitive. And so that's where you're seeing an advancement this year. The other advancement is on how customers interact with the vehicle. A lot of customers were uh, kind of overwhelmed with all of the capability. Mm -hmm. And so what we did this year is we've really expanded the human, human interface using artificial intelligence and voice enabled in order to understand the intent of the customer and configure the vehicle for them. And then the other part of that is an autonomous vehicle is operating with humans. And so how do we provide that human interface so the human knows what the tractor's doing and the tractor can kind of communicate back to the human. So you're seeing different uh, LEDs across the vehicle, LCD displays, trying to help with that communication with the autonomous vehicle. Um, this idea of bringing humans more into the mix and kind of what it actually looks like on the ground in the field is very apt and we're gonna get more into that. But first, Walt, I want you to, to tell us a little bit about Western Growers and what you're up to. Sure, so my uh, membership is basically the 2,000 plus fruits, nuts, and vegetable growers. So they grow all that cool, healthy food that we like. And um, the intersection with that in ag tech is how do we solve the labor problem? It's with products like Kubota's and, and other manufacturers, John Deere, Agco, yeah. Case New Holland's, and, and a lot of startups. So yeah. our job is to get them commercialized, get them into the trials, get them into the case studies, get them into the economic templates so the growers can analyze the, the tools like the cool sprayer you guys have here in R&D mode. Yeah. Um, and, and then validate for the farmers which ones are working and which ones work at other farmers' economics so they can then pattern detect and recognize what works in their own economics, then try before they buy and then buy hopefully because um, they need the help. Here in the C-Space studio, we talk a lot about messaging and branding. Is there is there a messaging mismatch, or at least I should say, are there areas for improvement in how uh, companies like Kubota need to reach members like yours in terms of the messaging that's going you know, in either direction? You know, it's part messaging. I think any messaging that doesn't focus on use cases and user economics, and I do see some of that here at CES and some of that at the Ag Tech shows, yeah. probably isn't going to get there. Um, so in other words, we don't like high-minded, pie-in-the-sky, conceptual robot ideas. <laughs> we like real on the ground, in the field, practical things. The joke among my Ag Tech friends is farmers are not aspirational. <laughs> so they, they don't aspire to do yeah. anything but make the economics on the farm better. <laughs> yeah. So they're boring customers, but they're reliable customers. And if you prove that it works, mm -hmm. they will buy, which is great. Well, then let's talk about an aspirational technology technology that, whose time may have come and we are able to kind of apply it in interesting practical ways, which is AI. Um, we, you know, we talked about autonomy and the kind of mix between human and machine interface there. Um, what, in general, what do your customers expect from Kubota when it comes to AI? Are they, are they thinking in those terms necessarily? Well, AI is providing, I think, uh, it's going to allow us to bridge into the insights. Uh, what we, in the past, uh, a lot of the farm management systems focused on providing data. And what we found is we're overwhelming the customers with data and they're not finding the, the economics. And so you listen to the customer, the, the growers, they really have a job to do. They don't have time to go out in the field and come back and analyze a bunch of data. Yeah. 
And so the customers are expecting us to provide the recommendations. So the artificial intelligence right now is allowing us to pull together insights from across the field, from weather data, and try to and provide in, insights, yeah. both from uh, the, the yield as well as some forecasting. So you're just starting to see that. The next step's gonna be how do we take that recommendation and that insight and act on it? Yeah. And trying to connect the autonomy and the AI, that's gonna be the big unlock. Yeah. And, and Walt, let's imagine that AI does what we want it to do in a practical way. What does the farm of the future, or at least the near future, look like there? What's a, what is a farmer, what is a grower in your organization now able to do in the next couple of years that they can't do now? I think two things. I think from a function perspective, they'll be able to do more weeding with robots, more planting with robots, more spraying with robots, and more harvest assist to help the crew move the stuff around. Yep. I think long term, maybe not one to two years, but maybe three to five. I think what's happening in technology is so interesting, and I'll, I'll take it back to the 90s. When we moved from browsing and portals to search, we changed user behavior across every activity, right? Yeah. Going from search in those 10 blue links on Google, which was one of the best economic engines ever created, to a context relevant search result with AI tools, and I'm using a couple of them every day now, yeah. um, that's really gonna reset the farmer's expectations. So I agree with Brett, I think these farmers don't want just data, they want the actionable recommendations, and the new tools like ChatGPT and Gemini can start to get there, and I think that's gonna be huge. So I think we'll see the benefits on the functionality, mm -hmm. later we'll see the benefits on on farmers actually demanding more context relevant answers, i.e. recommendations for what to do next for planting. You can imagine an AI, oh I'm sorry, go ahead Brett. I'd like to jump in on that. I mean, one thing that he mentioned as well, in the near term you're gonna see, is more of the assist. A lot of people are focused on completely automating the farm. That's a big ask and a big lift. And I don't honestly think it's gonna be hard to get the trust of the farmers, even if it worked. Yeah. And yeah. so having this as augmented automation, something that provides like assistive on the harvest, because I mean, harvesting is really difficult, but there's a lot of opportunity there to really get some efficiency improvements just by providing information, assisting the farmer yeah. on growing decisions, spraying de decisions, mm -hmm. as well as harvest through the ent entire cycle. Yeah. So I think the assist is more near term mm -hmm. versus the full automation of the farm. And even though, as you said, you may not want to surface all the data at that level to the individual grower, your, your machines are able to collect a ton of data. Ton of data. Can you talk to us about the scope there of what you're able to collect? Well, I think that's also why you're seeing um, this, well, one is why this partnership with startups is so important, is the OEMs offer scale. And our vehicles are on the farm all the time. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to collect the data. Now the important part is, in bridging that gap, is providing the recommendations. And so we're trying to accelerate that. So recently we acquired Bloomfield Robotics, for instance, that's bringing a, not only a sensor platform that we can integrate into our tractor, but also the artificial intelligence to provide really uh, actionable recommendations in a, in a grower-friendly dashboard. I want to talk a little bit more about how messaging changes behavior in terms of marketing trends that you might hear about in the grocery store, like organic, regenerative, sustainable, locally grown, all of these buzzwords. I mean, again, when we talk in the C-Space studio to a number of marketers and agency types here about this kind of stuff, how does it actually go down to the level of what the individual grower is doing? How should the folks who are in this studio as marketers think about how their terminology and messaging is going to actually impact on the level of the field? So I think it's an open question, right? I think the organic uh, lessons are instructive, right? So organic took a long time to get the messaging right, took a long time for it to mean something to consumers. Regenerative is going in possibly that direction, possibly a different direction. Mm. I think everyone in the ag tech space needs to be clear about what organic and regenerative are going to be. And, and the messaging opportunity is probably more on the retailer side than the ag tech equipment side. Yeah. So it's the store people and the restaurant people that want to market that the right way. Yeah. In terms of what that does for ag tech, the more organic and the more regenerative you have, a lot of times the more labor you need to throw at the solution, yeah. and labor is only getting more expensive, so only more opportunity for ag tech to come in and sort of solve the problem with technology instead of labor. Yeah. And looking at this, I mean, uh, from a marketing standpoint, just kind of turning it around and looking at bigger, bigger context, is with the ability now to take comprehensive data, with the ability to transmit that data into recommendations and, tra and track it through the entire food chain will en enhance efficiency, but I think there's opportunity in tying that strawberry all the way back to the producer. Yeah. So there might be a, a real change here as we get more transparency through the entire food chain.
We can use generative AI to help that throw it. We can, use, can, we, can we just throw the blockchain in there? Maybe we can like, track something through. <laughs> there you um, go. There's all sorts of opportunities. Well, here. the traceability <laughs> part is yeah. real, and that's exactly right. So Brett's right. If you can track it back to the consumer, obviously you help from both the consumer perspective, messaging-wise, and from a food safety perspective, because we can minimize the impact yeah. of things like recalls. And the efficiency. I mean, there's so much yeah. food loss along that uh, food chain right now, and it's really inefficient. And it's due to the lack of transparency, the lack of data, the lack of standards. And so that's one area that we're looking at is as we're collecting the data now through the sensors, we can look at the quality of the crop and getting the timing right so we get the distribution right and trace that all the way back to the end customer, I think is going to be really impactful on the efficiency of that food chain. I'll ask you both to fill in the blank to close us out here. 2025 will be the year of blank. I think 2025 is going to be the year of a lot of infrastructure getting built around technologies like AI. All the investment in the stuff I mentioned earlier, the NVIDIA's on the chip side, all the plumbing. We're, we're where the internet was in 1992, right? So all the plumbing gets built, then all the applications show up. Your e-commerce, your search, your social networking. So we're still a couple years away from that, but a lot of plumbing gets built, yeah. and a lot of early startups get started now that are a big deal in three to five years, we hope. And Brett? Yeah, I think uh, 2025 is where you're really going to see AI provide that augmented assistive uh, uh, recommendations. So we're going to start building the trust this year, applying AI to the data sets we have. So I look forward to 2025 as we start deploying this and really making an impact on the farming community. Well, we look forward to checking back in a year and seeing what the impact was. Walt, Brett of Western Growers and Kubota, respectively. Thank you both so much for joining us here in the C-Space studio. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching. My name is James Kotecki. I'm your host for these conversations here at CES 2025. We're talking to marketing, media, branding, advertising, thought leaders, basically geniuses of all kinds. And I can't wait to have more conversations. So stay with us. This is the C-Space Studio. <laughs>